Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving static equilibrium. And this is the situation we have. We have the step-by-step -step sign sign, which has a mass of 25 kilograms. It is supported by this cable and this cable. And we would like to be able to figure out what is the force of tension T1 in this cable, which makes an angle of 47 degrees with the roof, and the force of tension in the other cable, which makes an angle of 90 degrees with the wall. Now, this problem involves static equilibrium. Static, because the sign is not moving. Equilibrium because the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction and the sum of the turning forces or the torques are all going to be equal to zero. All right, so in this problem, we don't have any turning forces or torque. All we have is forces in the x direction, which we're going to set equal to zero. We have forces in the y direction, which we're going to set equal to zero. Now, the first thing we need to be able to sum up those forces is we're going to draw the forces in so we can see them all. And I like to think of all the forces starting right here at the junction of those cables. The easiest force to draw in is the weight of the object, which points straight down, mg. Then we have T1, which points up, and we have T2, which points to the right along each of those cables. Now you will notice we want to sum up the forces in the y in the x direction mg points in the y direction, the negative y, t2 points in the positive x direction, but t1 is somewhere between the y and the x-axis, so that tells us that we're going to have to break t1 into its x and its y components. This angle, excuse me, this vector right here represents the x component of t1, this vector represents the y component of t1. And you should also recognize that if this angle is 47 degrees, then by opposite interior angles, these two parallel lines, this angle right here is also 47 degrees. Now, the first step we drew in the forces, we broke T1 into its X and Y components. The second step is simply to sum up the forces in the X and to sum up the forces in the Y direction and set them equal to zero. Now, in the X direction, we have two forces. T2 points in the positive X direction, T1X points in the negative X direction, those are the only two in the x direction, so I'm going to write down T2 minus T1x equals zero. In the y direction, we have a similar situation, just two forces, mg negative, T1y points in the positive direction, so I'm going to write down that T1y minus mg equals zero. Now, I'm going to write out a term or solve for each of these four things, T1y, mg, we're not going to do T2 because we're trying to solve for T2, and we're going to write out a term for T1x, and then we'll substitute those into our equation and solve for T1 and T2. So the easiest one I think to do is first is mg because we know m and we know g, the mass and the acceleration due to gravity. So mg is equal to 245 newtons, 25 times 9.8. Now we're going to use our trig functions to write a term for T1x and for T1y. You will notice T1x is adjacent to this angle in this right triangle. That means that T1x is equal to the cosine, adjacent cosine of 47 degrees times T1. T1y is opposite this 47 degree angle in this right triangle, so that tells us that T1y is equal to the sine of 47 times T1. Okay, I cannot write a term for T2. We're going to have to solve for T2. All right, but now I have terms for T1y, mg, and T1x. And I can substitute those in and then solve for T1 and T2. So let's do that first, and we'll do the y components first. T1y is simply sine of 47 times T1 minus mg. We know mg is now 245 newtons. So I'm going to write that in, sine of 47 times T1 minus 245 newtons. And I'm going to do the same thing for the forces in the x direction. T2 minus the cosine of 47 times T1 is equal to zero because T1x, as we wrote down up here, is the cosine of 47 times T1. Now, this I think is one of the important points in this problem. You'll notice for the x forces, the forces in the x direction, we have two variables, T2 and T1 and one equation. Over here in the y direction, we have just one variable, T1. We know the sine of 47. We know that 245 is 245. So we have one variable and one equation 
and therefore we can solve for t1 pretty easily. All I got to do is add 245 to both sides, divide by the sine of 47, and I get that t1 is equal to 245 newtons divided by the sine of 47, which is simply 335 newtons. Okay, that's one of the forces we are trying to solve for. T1, we now know that T1 is 335 newtons. Now, <clears throat> back to our other equation. We have one equation with two variables, T2 and T1, but now we know T1, so we can substitute T1 or 335 newtons in here for T1, and we can so simply solve for T2. Move this to the other side, we get that T2 is equal to the cosine of 47 times T1. We know T1 is 335. Substitute that in. T2 is the cosine of 47 times 335. And we get, finally, that T2 is equal to 228.5 newtons. And we have, pretty simply, solved for T1 and for T2. All right, so we know those two now, and we have finished the problem. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I think that's pretty straightforward if you just follow those steps, draw in the forces, break T1 into its X and Y components, write out a term for each of those, substitute them in, substitute them in, solve for T1, and then solve for T2. Okay? Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you could subscribe to my channel. Get all my helpful physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up for this video and you can leave me a nice positive comment below in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.